Hi, welcome to my channel, Decoupage DIY with Joan Marie Domino. I have a fun decoupage Dollar Tree project to show you. Yes, I went shopping to the Dollar Tree and I found this really nice wooden pumpkin and I knew I can transform it from this to this using a decoupage technique, which is Mod Podge decoupage glue and a really nice Halloween decorative paper napkin. Let me show you how I did it. I started with taking the raffia and the tag off. We're not going to need that. We're going to be doing something else. So I already took them off and I'm starting to paint the underneath this lower part in a dark gray paint. Here it is. So you see, I decided what I was going to do is I wasn't going to decoupage the entire thing. I was just going to decoupage parts of it. And then I was going to use paint and uh, do some shading and some highlighting to give the pumpkin lots of dimension. I wanted to do something that looked more artsy, something when you put it up on the wall, it looks like, uh, like a work of art. I like paper crafting because of that. You really can transform something like this was a dollar into something that's really, really pretty. Now, as I go along doing this, and hopefully when you do this too, you might get a little paint here and there. Don't worry about that. Look here, I got some down there. That's okay because we're going to be doing um, more highlighting and shading, like I said, and we're also going to be doing decoupaging. So, well, that, not to worry about that. That's all going to be hidden with either other layers of paint or um, when we start to put the decoupage napkin on. Okay. The gray is all finished, and now I'm going to be doing some shading, and I'm using black paint. Now, it's okay to start doing this before the gray paint dries, because we're going to do a little bit of blending. This doesn't have to be, like, super neat. You just want to give the pumpkin some dimension, or else, without doing this, the pumpkin really looks kind of flat. So don't worry about how much black you put on. Like, that's a lot of black. I'm not sure I really need that much. But that's okay, because I got my gray right here, and I can just blend it out like that. So if I feel, well, that's still too much black, I can go back in and I can put a little bit more gray. I just want to give it some depth like that. All right. So just probably would help to blot off a little bit of the black ink paint. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to go back in with a little bit more gray. I'm just going to try to lighten up a little bit of that black. You have to sometimes play with this, but that's part of the fun is it doesn't have to be exact because of what we're doing, but you can see how the, uh, the two different color paints are definitely giving the pumpkin some dimension. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Okay, and I think that's done. So I am going to let this dry and then we're going to go on to the next step, which is painting these little pumpkin sections. The pumpkin, it's all dry, the black and the gray. So now we're going to take a look at the napkin that I picked for this pumpkin. Um, this is what they call a dinner size or a guest towel size. So you know, um, it's really nice. This has six panels and each panel is printed, which is good because I'm going to need three different panels to decoupage this. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna cut the napkin. So actually, you know, it's funny, this napkin costs probably around 70 cents and I'm gonna get two pumpkins out of it. So that's what, 35 cents? And then the pumpkin, uh, wooden pumpkin from the Dollar Tree costs, well, a dollar. So you can see that this is not a very expensive project. All right, next thing I wanna do is separate the napkin like that. We only need that top layer, that nice top printed layer. Okay. All right, we don't need that. So now I'm going to cut one of the sections and we're gonna start with the center one. Okay. Sometimes it's better to cut the napkin <laughs> before you separate it, but we're okay. All right, so I wanna do the painting of these three sections next, but I want the center part to be yellow. I want this trick or treat part to look like a glowing moon. So what I'm going to do is I'm laying it out about where I want it to be. Um, okay, because I wanna have some of the bats all right, I'm going to take a pencil and I'm just going to lightly put a little mark where the moon 
I'm gonna make begins and ends. Okay, so we can put that aside and we're going to start with the yellow. So there's the two little marks. I'm gonna take the yellow and we're gonna put it on that section. This part may need two coats, but that's okay. We want the sun to, I mean the moon, <laughs> to be um, nice and bright compared to the background. Okay, so just put it on like that. I'm going to put a little bit more on. And now I'm going to take my pouncer. This is a sponge pouncer. And I'm just going to do this. I just want to blend it out a little bit. I'm going to put a little more paint on. Pounce it. Just blend it out. Here. Pounce it. Okay. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to see if I have to go in with more paint. Oops. Okay, so we'll just put it down like that so you can see that that's where the moon is going to be. I'm just going to put a tiny little bit more on there, like that. Okay, now on to the next color. This is the color I chose. It's called um, Bright Gold. It is a metallic paint. I like this color because I thought it went really well with this napkin. That's why I chose it. Okay. So that's gonna be the next color we put on. Look how pretty that is. All right, I've got another brush. I'm just going to start to paint out the gold. Look how nice that looks. It almost has like that stained kind of look. Um, I guess almost like gives it like a vintage look. I, I really liked, I tell you this pumpkin this pumpkin is really nice. I went back to get another one and they only had a couple left. So if you see this pumpkin, definitely grab some because this pumpkin, because it doesn't have like a jack-o'-lantern face on it, you really can do all kinds of autumn and Thanksgiving things with it. Okay. So we're going to do the same on the other side. I want to give this side a little bit of time to dry. Okay. Um, I didn't always use to decorate for Halloween. The more I started doing decoupage and other crafting, the more I really liked doing it. And I also give my things away. Um, do you decoupage for Halloween or do any type of crafting for Halloween and put it out? Or do you give it away? I do give a lot of my things away. I mean, there's only so much you can put around your own home. But for a long time, I didn't even put it in my own home. But now I really like it. I like having things um, that I made. Okay, so now we are going to give this a little bit of time to dry. This is still a little wet, and then I'm going to go in and finish doing um, this beautiful gold color here and there, too. All right, the paint, it's just about dry now, so I'm ready to start decoupaging. Um, I did take some of this really pretty gold, and now I'm using it, um, you know, with the, with the black, I was doing shading, and now with this, I'm doing some highlighting. I really like it. It really looks pretty. I like it like that. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> now we're going to go on to put the napkin and we're going to be using Mod Podge decoupage glue and we're going to do this section first and then those two sections. I'm just going to take the glue and I'm going to put it right on top like this. Now these pieces of wood from the Dollar Tree, um, they're unfinished so they do, you know, paint and glue dry on them really fast. So when you're doing it in this particular case, you want to uh, move quickly so you can get the napkin on uh, before it dries. Um, however, um, as I go on with this video, you're going to see that I have a little fix for that if it should happen. Okay, now let's put the napkin down. All right, try to line it up over that yellow. All right, that looks pretty good. And we're just going to go like this. Okay, so the glue started to dry already, but that's okay. It's all right. Okay, let's just take a piece of saran wrap and just go over it. I use the saran wrap because it protects the napkin because the napkin is getting wet from the decoupage glue. Okay, and um, it's fragile. It's fragile when they get wet. Okay, let's take a look. Ooh, that looks nice. Let me hold it up so you can see it. See how the moon is nice and yellow compared to this more gold color I did on the other side? Okay, 
I have to let this dry a little bit, then I'm going to show you how we're going to remove this excess napkin. After this dried, I went around and I picked up the napkin a little bit to see if it completely adhered. And there was some spots where it wasn't all the way down. I just added a little glue um, and I pushed the napkin back down. However, I still want to make sure this napkin is completely set on there. So I'm going to do some ironing. <laughs> I'm going to take a piece of baking parchment. I'm going to put it on top and I'm going to use my little Cricut crafting iron and I'm just going to go over it. And what this is going to do is it's going to heat up that glue underneath and the glue is going to melt and it's going to adhere much better um, to the piece of wood now. Um, the iron on technique is one of my favorites. I found that when I did anything that was flat, this really helped eliminate all of the wrinkles. And to me, it also seems like the uh, napkin adheres better. Of course, it only works um, with flat um, items. So you just want to remember, um, you can't do things that are round or circular. You only want to do things that are flat. Okay, iron still gets hot, but if you do a lot of decoupaging and you use your iron a lot, if you've been doing the uh, iron-on method, I definitely recommend a craft iron like the Cricut. Um, there are other ones out there too. I just happen to really like that. Okay, so we took off the parchment paper. And that looks really nice. See how the color is coming through the napkin. It really, I mean, the moon, it really does pop out now that I did that little layer of yellow under there. Okay, now how are we going to remove all of this excess napkin? Okay, let me just turn that off. We're going to use a nail file or an emery board, okay? So I'm going to take the file and I'm going to angle it like this. And I'm just going to go around the oval. And what this is going to do is it's going to remove that napkin. Let's see. Okay. See how that does it? I don't have to take like a knife um, or an exacto knife. I can't get a scissor in there. That would be like impossible. And just go around like this. And I'm angling it kind of to the left. Um, off of the top and that's really what's helping me to remove this napkin. It's a little bit awkward because it's not straight. A lot of the things that we have done, um, it's straight, but this is, now we have to go into this little indentation here. Okay, it might take you a little bit, but it really gives you good results. Okay, let's see. All right, so I'm going to keep doing this all the way around and then when I come back, this is all going to be off. And then I'm going to do those other two sections. Okay. Okay. So I am just about done with this. Done. I did finish it. Now, I had a little technical difficulty. Um, when I was setting up my studio today, I forgot to put a new nail file out. So you saw I had a little trouble here and there. That's because it was an old nail file. So you definitely want to make sure any of the things you're using, that they're in good shape. Same thing with an X-Acto knife. You always want to make sure that your tools are in good working condition or new, or you're not going to have any little difficulties like I just had. Okay. So now we're going to do the two sides and now um, I have a better part of the my nail file to use um, okay so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to use the trick-or-treat part I'm only going to use the bats and I'm going to put it like this I'm going to put one this way and I'm going to take another one and put it that way I want it to look like the bats are swirling around this center moon all right so we're going to go back with the glue Mod Podge. All right. And we're going to put it on. Another little tip is when you're doing something like this and you know you have to file the edge, um, try not to go over the edge also. It is a little tricky to do um, the filing this way, but I have to tell you, it really, sometimes things are just worth the effort. They just come out better. Okay. There we go. All right, now let's put our napkin on. I want to make sure I have my saran wrap over here. Sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, just want to make sure I have my saran wrap. Okay, well, we're going to put the napkin on, and I'm going to try not to get much of that trick-or-treat, those letters. And I think we did okay. Let's take our saran wrap, 
And we're just going to smooth it down like that. Okay, now we're gonna go on to the other side. And here's my other napkin. And we're gonna do the same thing with the decoupage glue, with the Mod Podge. And we're gonna put it on. I'm just gonna fold this one back because I definitely don't wanna get glue on that. All right. Like that. Now I know how this looks white on top of the gold, but that's okay because Mod Podge dries clear, just like most white glues, school glue, it dries clear. So you don't have to worry about that. You're still gonna see that gold paint, um, no problem. Just like here. Okay, now we're gonna do it. We're gonna flip it around. Remember, like I said, we're going to do it so that the bats look like they're swirling around the moon. All right, try not to get too much of the letters. Okay, same thing. I'm gonna take the saran wrap and we're going to just press it down to make sure it's well adhered. All right, I just want to give that um, a little bit of time to dry. The glue is all dry now. I did do like what I did with the center is I went around and there was a couple of spots I did have to put a little bit more glue on then I just pressed it down. Now before I do the iron on, I'm going to do some more ironing because it is a little bumpy. Um, I did trim off any of this part that was inside. I mean, for me to iron this and have a piece overlapping, you know that that piece is just going to stick to the center. Okay, so we don't need those. We do need parchment paper. And I just want to say one thing about parchment paper before I go any further. I definitely recommend the Reynolds parchment as opposed to the Dollar Tree. I love the Dollar Tree. I go there all the time. In fact, I have to go <laughs> buy some nail files. But the parchment paper sticks. Um, when I used it, I had a really hard time pulling the parchment paper off. I know this costs more money, but I can use one piece like this seven, eight, nine times, where with the one I got from the Dollar Tree, I, I had trouble even just using it one time. So I'm just going to recommend buy something a little bit better. If you like doing the iron on, and you'll just have much better results. Again, I love the Dollar Tree, but as far as parchment paper goes, um, this is a better brand. Okay. All right, so here's my iron. Put the parchment, baking parchment down. And now I'm gonna do the same thing as I did to the center, is I'm just going to run my craft iron and it's going to flatten it out. It's hot, don't touch it, it's hot. And it's gonna flatten out those wrinkles. Okay, let's take a look. Very nice. I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Now, this iron, um, the Cricut iron, which I've had now for months, I use it all the time, and I really do recommend it. I really do like it. I do have the link below um, if you want to go take a look at it. Um, when you go to the links I list and you purchase through those links, it doesn't cost you any more money. I make a little bit of money, and I use that money um, to make videos. So thank you. For those of you who have been going, thank you. I really do appreciate it. Okay, all right, we don't need the iron anymore. Here's how you turn it off and on, off, on, and that's just different degrees of heat. Okay, so we can put that aside. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna hold it up so you can see it. It's nice and flat. That was bumpy, now it is nice and flat. Okay, so I have a new nail file, and we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. I'm holding it at an angle. And I'm just going like this, angle to the left. I don't know the degree of angle. <laughs> I just know I'm kind of going to the left. And I'm running the um, emery board along the top edge. And you can see when you have a nice newer emery board that turning off this little bit of an edge uh, just works so much better. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit more here. But it is a little awkward. I'm gonna to have to give myself a tiny little bit of credit because it is a little bit awkward going around those curves, um, especially in between, but it really does a good job. It really makes it look nice and clean. All right, we'll go a little bit more up here. All right, now I'm gonna show you something. It's lifting there a little bit. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my iron and maybe the glue just didn't heat up in that corner. Let's see. All right. 
iron back. Iron was still hot. I didn't have to turn it back on. Let's see. All right, pick it up. Yes, we're in much better shape. I'm gonna give that um, a little bit of time to cool and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do the same thing. If you can tell, I don't know if Art is gonna be able to get this, but if you can see over here how the bats are swirling, I love how this looks. Look, see, all I needed was a better nail file, a newer nail file. All right, so I'm going to finish doing this, and when I come back, I'm going to show you how we can make this really, really sparkly. My pumpkin is now done. I did all the painting. I decoupaged the napkin on, and now I want to make this really glittery, so I'm going to put on one of my favorite things in the whole world, which is Mod Podge Extreme Glitter. I love this. It's basically your Mod Podge glue. Let me open it. I hope you can see this. But it has, probably not be able to see it. Maybe you can see it on the edge. It has really fine glitter in it. So I'm going to put this right on top of what I've already decoupaged, this napkin. There we go. Now, again, I know it looks white, but when it dries, it's going to dry clear and it's going to have this beautiful, beautiful shine to it. When I'm done with this and it dries, now you could do this if you want. You can go back, but make sure it's dry. Put a piece of your baking parchment on and iron it again, okay? And you can do that. And it, can, it will, I'm gonna say, embed the glitter from the glue a little bit more. So we're gonna do this. Oh, by the way, I found, um, I do a lot of experimenting when I'm decoupaging in my studio. I'm always trying different things and I watch everything. And I found that when I put a top layer of Mod Podge on, and I, this is something I learned um, with some of the groups I belong to, if I use a sponge, it doesn't tend to bubble up as much because when you put something wet, like wet Mod Podge, and then you put wet Mod Podge, it's water-based on top again, that's where you get your bubbles and your wrinkles. That's why I like the iron-on. However, I did find, for those of you who don't want to do the iron-on, not everybody likes that, um, using the sponge to put on that top layer of Mod Podge um, will definitely keep more of those bubbles and wrinkles from coming back. Okay, I think we covered it all. It's just gonna take a few minutes to dry, but that's okay. The glues usually dry pretty quickly. It's going on top of a napkin, on top of um, unfinished wood, so it doesn't take long to dry. Let me hold it up, and I hope that Art can get that. Okay, it's drying. Look how nice that is, it's so pretty. All right, so once this dries, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm gonna show you one of them now. I don't have to wait for it to dry completely. I went to the dollar store, Actually, I went to the dollar store with my sister and, you know, she makes all these trolls. So she's working on some Halloween ones and she bought these little rings. They're bat rings. <laughs> and um, she cut off the ring part and the legs and I did it too. And I decided, well, you know, just one of these would be really cute right there, up, um, right above the moon. So I'm just going to take a little bit of hot glue and I'm going to put it down there. Just a little. Oop. All right, we're gonna take our little bat and we're gonna, wait a minute, I'm gonna take him. Sorry, I'm gonna switch bats. Okay, that one still had a little bit of his legs. <laughs> I don't want the bat with the legs. And we're just gonna put him on just like that. Just gives a little bit of dimension. I wouldn't do any more, but just one looked really kind of cute. Now, for the top of the pumpkin, instead of putting the raffia back on, I'm just gonna put this over here and take out my other pumpkin. Oh, it's right here. Um, I did this instead. I had bought this, uh, I don't know, last year um, in the spring. I think we got it at Hobby Lobby and it was like 80 or 90 percent off. I thought that the orange and the yellow were a little bit too bright. So what I did is I just painted it um, black. I left a little bit of the orange on, just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of color, just a little bit. And I really liked how that looks. I like it better than the raffia. Now there is a hole in there and you can slip a little piece of twine or rope and you can hang it if you want, or you can do like what I did here is you can just lean it in your kitchen or um, wherever you like to decorate. Now, because before I said that these pumpkins do not come printed, 
um, printed. They don't come with a jack-o'-lantern face. They don't have to just be for Halloween. So look and see what you have, your other napkins. I looked through what I had and I thought, well, this would be really cute with maybe the little birdies in the center, um, or you can do this one. It says happy fall. You could put that in the center, and then you can just use the leaves from the napkins to do these other sections, and you could do a little something different up there. Um, so don't think just for Halloween. Think fall, um, think Thanksgiving, and as a matter of fact, I am going to have a few more samples of these. I'm going to put it on my Facebook group page. Um, it's called Decoposh DIY with Joan Marie Domino. Um, become a member. The things I do in my YouTube channel, I expand on that um, Facebook group page, and you can try things, and you can also post on that same page, um, and as long as you're going to be going to that page, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Decoposh DIY. DIY with Joan Marie Domino. Please share it with your friends. Give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the little bell. Um, this way you'll get notifications. I have a couple other videos coming out almost right away. So then you're going to know that they're there. You're going to get a notification. I want to thank the Vippies Designs, www.vippies.com. I get all my beautiful napkins from them. You can go take a look at what they have, www.vippies.com. I want to thank my camera guy, Art. <laughs> he was really helpful. This was a little tricky of a, a video for us to do, but he did a really great job. And thank you so much for watching.